Like everyone else, I'm currently watching Stranger Things. I've always been attracted to the opening title. I feel like it's relatively simpler animation compared to the other TV series titles like Arcane, Westworld, Daredevil, Walking Dead, or of course, Game of Thrones. Yet, I find myself so captivated by it. So lately, I find myself watching and looking at the Stranger Things title more closely and wonder if I can recreate it in 2D. I spent about two days recreating it, trying to get it as closest to the original. But of course, it won't be identical because the original seems to be done in 3D and it has a lot of texture and more dimensions. But you know, just for fun, I managed to recreate it with Saber plugin. And if you haven't downloaded Saber before, I'd recommend it. It's totally free and you can create so many cool effects. Now I'd like to share my findings with you. I was gonna recreate the whole sequence of Stranger Things intro and do a tutorial on it. But I reckon that would take a while so to start off, you need to just type in Stranger Things with this font called Bengquad Pro ITC. I'm sure I butchered the pronunciation, but this is what you want to look for. You can download it from Adobe Fonts. If you have Creative Cloud subscriptions, then it will be free. The next thing is you want to right click create mask. So you want to create mask from this text. And then I'm just going to change the color of the layer to something else. And then you want to add Saber onto this layer. I'm just going to hit control space to bring up the FX console by Video Copilot. Instead of going to effects and preset, I can just like hit control space to bring up this extension. And I'll just have to type in the effect that I want, hit enter, and it's already applied. You can download it also for free. I've put the link in the description below. Now, of course, there's so many things that you can do with Saber, but today we're just going to focus on how to achieve the Stranger Things look. So I'm going to go to the preset and then I'm going to select neon and then I'm going to change the glow color to red, obviously, because that's the color of Stranger Things. And then the most important thing is under customize core, you want to go to core type and then change it from Saber to layer mask. So as long as you have the mask on your layer, it's gonna follow whatever mask you have. We're gonna turn down the glow intensity to 35. And then there's also the glow spread, which is how far your glow will spread. The bigger it is, the more spread out it will be. The less it is, it's closer to the mask or what they call it core. So for glow spread, I'm gonna do 0.25. And then the core size, which is basically the mask here. So the core is basically just the source of the glow. So I'm going to reduce it to one. So it's kind of like thin like that. If we want to compare it with the original sequence, I have it here. So I'm just going to open it side by side so that we can just compare both of the look of this title. It doesn't have a lot of like glow spread. The color of the core is red. The lightest bit of the core is kind of like light red. Comparing with our title at the moment, all of the core is white. So we want to try to minimize that. You can reduce that kind of like whiteness color using this core softness under customize core. I'm going to change the core softness to two. And straight away, it's already kind of like fixing that bright white on the core. I'm going to adjust the start size and the end size. It's basically just the start size of the core. So at the moment, it's set to 100. So say if we set it to 10, let's look at the A here. So it looks like the core starts from here, which is only 10%, and then it ends very thick. So if we reduce the end size as well, it's going to be thinner. So I'm just going to change the start size to 30 and the end size to 75. Now we also want to animate the mask evolution. So it's basically just going to animate the core itself. So I'm going to add a time expression. Hit Alt and click on the stopwatch icon and type in time asterisk. I'm going to do 100 for now so that we can see how it animates. So at the moment, it animates like really fast. I want it to animate very subtly. So I'm going to reduce the number to 10. Now let's go to glow settings. So if you open glow settings, they have this individual glow settings that you can adjust. So basically you just have to play around with the numbers to get the look right. So now I'm just going to fast forward it and just play around with the numbers. It's getting closer to what we want here. Now also, if you look at the original sequence, obviously the S and the R are bigger than the rest. So we're going to try to do that. And I'm just going to use the guide. So if you have your ruler open here by hitting Control R, just drag from the ruler and drag a guide to the top of all of the lines and also the bottom of all of the lines. So like that. 
Now what I want to do is to select your layer, double click on the S, and then we're going to enlarge it to this line here. It will align with the top of the T here. So hold shift and then drag it out. The same with the R at the end. And obviously, because we have to mask on the R, we have to select both of them. And usually what I'll do, I'll select the layer and hit M to show all of the mask. And then find the R, which is, I think it's these two. After selecting those two, double click on it on the screen. And then hold shift and drag it out to the guide there. Now it's time to animate it. Now, in order to get the timing right, I'm actually going to bring the footage onto my composition here. The size is 720p, so I'm going to enlarge it to 150 so it fits our composition. So we'll start from here. As you play your playhead like this, you can see that some of the letters are different to the original. I think they might have adjusted themselves and we don't have to get exactly the same. But what I'm doing here just to see the alignment of the first line and the second line. So I'm just going to bring my layer up here just so that it aligns with the bottom here. Don't worry about some of the lines not aligning up. Now let's animate this mask. The letters kind of like animating in one by one. So I'm just going to find like first frame of this last scene. So over here, I'm going to create a marker by holding Alt asterisk on my keyboard. I feel like everyone's keyboard is going to have different shortcut. I want to make it 3D just so that we can play with the depth of field. So we make it 3D and then create camera. Make sure the type is one node camera. I'm just going to turn down the opacity. So hit T and then just turn down the opacity so you can see what's going on here. For the camera, hit P and then let's animate the position. So we want it to be super close. So I'm animating the Z depth there. And then let's play your playhead and see where it ends. So it kind of like ends right there. If you can see that very subtle guide, create another position there. And then just try to match the size of the text by animating the Z depth of your camera. It doesn't have to be perfectly the same. So it's kind of like that. And then it kind of like fade out. Let's bring up the opacity again. So now let's animate the letters. So let's focus on this one first. So that's the A and the N. So it looks like they're just animating in inward. And it looks like most of the letters just kind of like animate inward as well. The only ones that animate vertically are, let's see, the T there, the E, the H, T, E, H, N, and S. I'm going to start with the outer one first, which is S and R. You click on your mask layer and hit M. Let's start with the R and S. This is the S. It stops animating about there. So that's why I'm going to create the keyframe. And then we can start animating from there. So create another keyframe there. And then just basically drag that away from the screen. And then let's animate the R as well. So it's these two. Just remember they have two masks. And that's about when it stops animating it as well. And then it animates from the outside. I'm just going to bring that outward like that. And then let's do the T and E here. So T stops animating about there. And then maybe from around there, we'll bring that up like that. And then the E as well. So it stops animating in about there. So create a keyframe about there we will bring it up. That's what I'm going to do for the rest of the letters. So I'm just going to fast forward this. Okay, now I've already animated all of the letters. Now I'm going to scale this down so we can see and compare the animation. I'm going to turn down the opacity to 60. I'm going to make sure all of the end keyframes are easy ease. So I'm going to select those and hit F9 and do for the rest as well. I'm going to play with the position. I'll make the first keyframe easy ease. I'm also going to go to graph editor. I'm just going to play with the spade and play with the handles here, trying to match the position of the letters. 
I'll change the end keyframe to easy ease as well. And basically just play around. I think that look a bit better. So that's cool. The title has this bars. So we're going to do that animation. I'm just going to move the play here to where the tech almost similar. So like there is a bit more similar. I'm going to create a mask on this layer as well. Just approximate the size of the line by using guide. So I'm just going to create a guide there at the end of the R and the start of the S. It looks like it's going to be something like that. Create the other two as well here. So the thing is, our title doesn't perfectly line up with the original sequence. But if you just watch the original sequence, the bottom line here, it's like a line with the T there. So we're going to make sure that that happens to our title as well. And basically, I'm going to create a line there. But obviously, we're going to make sure that the size is the same as the top line here. So I'm going to rename this line one. And I'm going to duplicate that by holding Control D. And then I'm going to double click on that and bring that down. So like about there. All I need to do is to kind of like resize the length by holding shift and then drag. And then I'm going to duplicate that again. Control D, double click and move it to the side. Even though the size of this bottom lines are the same. They don't line up with the R, that's because all of the letters here are way more closer to each other as well. So I'm going to try to move some of these letters to the left so that this line kind of like lines up a bit better with the R. Let's start with the probably the N here. Look for your N. You want to go to the last keyframe of your N and then just move it as much as you can. Obviously, I don't want it to kind of like go over the A mask. And then let's go to the J and go to the last keyframe of the J and move it across as well. We can probably bring it a bit closer. So if you watch the original sequence here, they actually cut out the J a little bit so that it's closer to the N. So we can maybe try to do that. So if we bring that closer like that. Now let's zoom in and I'm actually going to change this color to something that's a bit more obvious so we can see it clearly to white. And I'm just going to create a guide here, I think like about there. And then just create vertices here and there and then delete this vertex. Click on one of the vertex and then hold alt and then move this handle on the bottom straight to the guide. And now I'm going to move the E and the R. So that's looking much better actually. I'm going to close this footage tab and I'm going to turn back on the sequence in the composition and then just have a look at where they match the best. So it's about there. We want to reduce the length of the top line. So it should be lining up with, I think, with the top R here. So just double click on that mask, hold shift and then drag it to the left. Now let's animate the lines. I'm going to turn this back on and see where the line started to animate. So it kind of like start animating about there. So I'm going to create a marker there. I'm going to turn it off and basically let's go to the line, all of the lines here, hit M. And I'm going to start with the top line first. So that's where it starts. And then let's check out where it ends. Just watch the top line. So kind of like finish around there. I'm going to create another mask keyframe there. And I'm going to close the rest of this mask so that we can just focus on the lines now. Now I'm going to select these keyframes and I'm going to easy ease it. So if you watch the lines here, it kind of like animates really fast at the start and then slows down at the end. So that's using easy ease. Now I'm going to use a juice copy ease by hitting shift f and then it will bring up this a juice tools copy ease you can download this tool and i'll put the link in the description below and basically i'm gonna choose this easing 04 and let's just turn this off and go to the first keyframe of this line and obviously you want to animate this from the middle so just double click on that again 
and hit control and drag it inwards until it's gone so obviously you'll still leave that line over there so it'll be there the whole time so the trick to get rid of it is please zoom into your timeline here just move up one frame by clicking on page up and then create a keyframe there and basically i'm just gonna drag that out of the frame now let's watch this and we're gonna do the same with the rest of the lines we're just gonna investigate where it start so it's kind of like start from here create keyframe for both of the bottom lines and then analyze again on where it ends stop around there and then select all the keyframes now because we've already selected the copy is from this ages tools before all you need to do is just select the keyframes and shift v will paste the exact same ease in like what we did before so if we turn this off again we're gonna animate the first keyframe of each line drag that to the left there and for this one also drag that inwards to the left and then obviously we want to get rid of those lines so zoom in and move backward one frame and then select both line two and line three here and i'm just gonna drag it down now what I noticed that I haven't done is on the Saber plugin, we forgot to do Flickr because if you watch the original title, it has a bit of Flickr. So we're going to do that. And basically under Flickr, there's Flickr intensity and speed. Flickr intensity is basically just how strong the Flickr will be. And the Flickr speed is obviously how many Flickr will there be in a second. We're probably going to do, let's try 50 and Flickr speed, leave it to 15 and see how that looks like. So I'm pretty happy with that. So we're just going to focus on finessing this scene. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add vignette. Basically, you just need to create solid, new solid, and then make sure it's black. And I'm going to call it vignette. And I'm going to go to this shape tool, hold it until you can see options, and then go to ellipse tool, double click on it. And then under mask here, just invert it. Hit F to add the feather. So maybe I'll add it to 250. So it just has a little bit of vignette there. And now as you can see, like towards the end, if we watch the original again, it kind of like fades out. And the way it fades out is actually, it seems like the vignette kind of like closing in on it. So I'm going to try do that. So it finishes like around there. Hit M on your vignette and create keyframe on mask path and look for when it started to kind of closing in, maybe like around there, create another keyframe again. So I'm gonna turn off the footage guide here and go to the last keyframe of your vignette and double click on the mask and drag it inward by holding Control, Alt, Shift until you can't see anything anymore. And maybe I'll select the first keyframe and hit F9 to easy ease it. So what I noticed as well, the camera kind of like stops at the end. I actually want it to kind of like keep continuing. So I might just drag it a bit backward. And also under camera, we're going to play around with the depth of field. So open your camera, under camera options, turn on the depth of field and maybe bring it up a little bit. So the more you bring it up, obviously the blurry it will be. I'll do like a hundred. And I'm going to close this layer and I'm going to open the two views layout. So that's my camera and that's my Stranger Things outline. The focus distance is over there. So maybe I'll bring it down. So actually, if you watch the original sequence, it's actually really clear at the end. So I might actually want to do that. Adjust the focus distance to all the way back here and maybe just reduce the aperture to 10 so you just kind of like have a bit of blurriness i'm quite happy with the results thanks so much for watching this long tutorial i hope you enjoyed that and i thought i should do this kind of like fun tutorial and yeah i'll see you next time